Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have a glorious review before us of a notorious dinosaur. We have the Rebor Saurophaganax. But I do have actually all three variants here. There's just really not much of a difference between the different box arts, aside from the, you know, names of course, but... You can see that on the front of the box art, we basically just have some really cool images here, the skeletal structure of the Saurophaganax. And then on the back, a gigantic pile of different dinosaurs that have been released by Rebor up until this point. And we've, of course, got some open spaces here. I'll be intrigued to see how small these boxes get over time as they continue to release more and more. But I have been waiting for these releases for quite some time, so let's go ahead, pop these out of the box, and check them out. So one thing that's really exciting is the fact that we actually have one of these cards again. This is like old school Rebor right here. I can't recall them actually releasing a card in any of their releases in quite some time. And if they have, I really don't remember it. So this, again, straight away is really awesome to see them doing this again. I hope they continue to do this with all of their future releases because I always loved these. And then they just kind of stopped including them for quite some time. So I'm really happy to see that it is back and, you know, again, included in this release. Awesome stuff. And then we've got ourselves the three different variants. We've got the reddish version. We have the... 1998 Godzilla type version and we've also got the iguana style version which now there's just too many in here to really fit them in frame pretty nicely but you can see again three different variants so they definitely give you your options as far as color schemes go and choosing the one that fits and suits you best but I really like all of them actually I think my least favorite would be that kind of Godzilla 1998 version just not a super huge fan of that one but my favorite I think it was pretty safe to say it's the reddish one. I really, really like the reddish one. I just feel like out of all of them, that looks the most natural. But I will also say that this version, the kind of iguana style version, is much nicer in hand than I was expecting it to be. I kind of was like a little iffy when initially seeing the prototype images, but I will say it definitely looks a lot nicer here in hand. And something else that is actually really exciting to me is the fact that they are really quite large, like... That's a pretty darn big model right there, much larger than I expected it to be, so that as well is pretty exciting. Similar to the Smilodon that Rebor had released not long ago, I was really blown away by the size of that model. This is exactly the same situation where it is just much larger than I was expecting it to be. Really quite surprising, but a very nice welcome surprise. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at all of these right now. So as far as the sculpts go, all three are exactly the same. We just have different paint variants. So we really only need to go over the sculpt of one. I figured we would start with the version that was my personal favorite, the Volcanic Cavern variant. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see some really, really nice looking skin texture, beautiful scale detail with some very nice reddish tones. And one thing they've done straight away that I'm a big fan of with this model is giving it a nice dark wash. And you can see how it really nicely highlights all of the skin texture and scale detail throughout the course of the entire face. Of course, that dark wash isn't contained with within the face only like you could see it goes everywhere but it really makes the skin texture and scale detail in the face pop beautifully you can also see the nostrils are sculpted out up here at the tip of the snout we also have some nice black dry brushing in certain areas you can kind of see it here run along the side of the face down in the lower jaw all around the eye socket in the crests and running along the top of the snout down actually right there by the nostrils you can see more of that black but Again, the actual fine detailing of this looks fantastic. And one thing that I really love about this model is the fact that we have some nice yellowish tones for the eye. You can see they've kind of given it a nice black in there, then given it a yellow and then a black pupil. Much nicer than the gold they were frequently using on most of their releases not long ago. Definitely a much bigger fan of using a yellowish tone rather than a gold. You can see the crests as well look really cool, almost dragon-like on this particular version. I really do like that. As well, you can see again more really, really nice looking detailing here on the top of the head. And speaking of the eye, you can also probably take note to the fact that it has a nice gloss coat there. It's really nicely shining and glistening there as I turn it and allow the light to hit it. We do have an articulated jaw, which works pretty nicely. And on the inside of the mouth, we have those kind of classic, very nice looking rebore teeth. You can also see the inside of the mouth sports a nice pinkish tone. We have the tongue and everything in there. It looks really good as far as the detailing goes. Nice gloss coat added as well. 
I'm kind of surprised to see that there isn't really any color variation to the inside of the mouth or the tongue or anything, like it's just a straight up pink, but it does still actually look pretty good. You can see from the front there, and then from this side, again, that gloss really shines, giving it that nice saliva-like look. And the teeth as well actually shine quite nicely, but you can see the opposing side of the head looks great. The eye paint also looks very nice, very precise over here as well. Kind of like clusters of osteoderms and stuff here as you start to leave the head of our dinosaur. You can also pick up on the ear right there. And then as you run along the back of the dinosaur, you have almost like an armored kind of an appearance to it. But at the same time, it just kind of has like numerous rows of ridges that run along the back. And you can see there are numerous. We have one running down the spinal column. Column, then we have rows on each side of the spinal column and then rows on each side of that. This row though kind of tapers off and then it's not quite as consistent as you see with the others but it is still there. But again it looks really cool. They've given it some nice dry brushing again with that black continuing to give it that kind of volcanic I guess type of a look. You also have a black streak that runs down along the side of the neck and again more really really nice looking scale detail as well as a lot of skin wrinkles and stuff showing off the movement of the dinosaur kind of a little bit of a hanging skin here on the underside of the neck and throat region you can also see like a line of ridges running along the throat of the dinosaur as well as a little more hanging skin really nice looking as far as that goes really vibrant detailing throughout the course of this dinosaur as you move down the neck you can see the first of all the neck is actually really quite uh, impressive in size like it's definitely pretty bulky but as you do move down into the body you can pick up on the shoulder blade a little bit right there more kind of osteoderms and stuff poking up larger kind of scoots up here at the top more like ridges and stuff running along the spinal column there are also kind of like some scattered osteoderms in the stomach region you can pick out the rib cage really nice naturalistic transition from the red to kind of like a yellowish brown here for the side of the dinosaur and you can also see like some light hints of the reds in there as well which is pretty nice to see and then there are areas throughout the course of the dinosaur that kind of have like scoots showing up in certain spots like you can see them running along the back of the arm right here you can see in the front of the arm then showing up down here in certain areas of the arm you can see some nice muscle definition contained within the arms as well and a very nice looking hand sculpt with some scoots down the fingers it's all been really nicely dry brushed again with some blacks and then we have the nice variations of reds and the arms are actually articulated so you can put the arms out like this if you would choose to or back you know more in a natural position into the body I would say a little bit you can also see some nice skin wrinkles and stuff here in the lower part of the stomach as well as the skin kind of stretching off of the stomach with this leg pulling back as that leg is pulling back pretty far you can also see some skin stretching right here off of the hip region which is pretty cool to see I will say the tail of this one just does not want to connect correctly you can see it's kind of hanging off there I don't know if I'm going to have to glue this one to get the tail on better but it doesn't go on as smooth as the others did you can see the hip bone up here on the top of the leg again on the top of the thigh moving down the thigh some more really nice muscle definition some nice darker tones of reds and we have some osteoderms again poking up here and there we have more of those kind of like clusters of scoots running down both the front and the rear it looks like of the leg as you move down the leg you can see the kneecap again those scoots continue to run down the entire course of the shin you see the calf muscle very big and bulging and that's one area where you can really pick out how nice that scale detail looks because the dark wash is perfectly applied back there more scoots again running down the back of the leg that's one thing that rebor really seems to enjoy about this is pretty much coating it with different kind of armored like scoots all over the place absolutely gorgeous looking foot sculpt you can see lots of creasing and wrinkling in the foot due to the bend in the foot the toes kind of touching as they're about to leave the ground really cool looking nicely painted nails with a black they also have a nice gloss coat and again the skin detail and everything shines really nicely down here due to the dark wash like we've seen throughout the course of the dinosaur as we move up here you can see lots of creasing as you move out the length of the tail most definitely going to have to glue that tail so that it holds tighter but you can see as we run down here again more of those ridges running along the back of the tail here nice again really smooth transition from the red down into that yellowish brown that transitions to an even lighter tone the further down into the underside you get and we have some really nice looking skin texture that diminishes in size as far as the scale details we reach the tip of the tail we do have a bendable tail as we have a wire in the tail which allows some nice posability as usual from rebore if you look at the underside again the detailing really shines on the underside due to the 
dry brushing that they've given it, but also the really nice dark wash. Again, it helps to amp up the realism and the appearance of the detail on the underside. You can see even the underside of the foot is actually really beautifully sculpted. And you can see we have more scoots running down the chest, down into the stomach, and leading actually pretty far down before tapering off. But the detailing of the underside, again, really nicely done, also shines quite beautifully. Thanks to the dark wash, you can see the arm was popping out right there. But again, articulation on both arms, you can see they completely come off of the figure, but they actually go back on really easily. They definitely connect back very nicely. On this side, you can see that the head is turned in a right-leaning position. So we have more kind of creasing and everything going on over here. There's quite a bit of creasing running down the course of the neck, again, due to that turn. I apologize if you hear the dog barking in the background. It just does not want to stop, apparently. But you've also, again, got those ridges running down here along the underside of the neck. All of the detail, again, shining brilliantly thanks to the nice dark wash. You also have that black stripe that decreases as soon as it hits the shoulder area, kind of tapers off. As you move down into the body, you can, again, see the shoulder blade. Push that arm in a little better, but you can see the shoulder blade again right here. You can also see the rib cage. But the rib cage is obscured a little bit more on this side, more so than it was on the other side because the leg is, you know, taking a nice step forward. So it's kind of hiding the stomach region there. You can definitely see those kind of scoots running down the front of the thigh, though. Yet again, you can pick out the hip bone, more of those ridges and osteoderms running along the back of the dinosaur. Very nice muscle definition as well as some nice creasing in the joint of the knee. The kneecap itself on the front of the leg again the calf muscle which is one of my favorite areas i think as far as how nice the detail pops thanks to that dark wash where you could see again some really nice creasing in the skin as well as some beautiful scales in that area more scoots and stuff running down certain areas of the leg again as we run down the course of the shin also you can see some nice creasing in the ankle and then as you lead down into the foot again the foot looks beautiful very bird-like this foot is planted nice and flat supporting the majority of the weight of the dinosaur as the opposing leg is about to pick up you can see again very bird-like toes nice scoots down the course of the toes and some more fantastic scale detail again brought out wonderfully with that dark wash the nails are painted with a nice black again given a nice gloss coat so they shine really nicely you can see dew claws are present as well again nicely painted and then as you lead up here into the tail you can see the skin stretching off of the tail you know as far as the thigh moving forward really stretching that skin more of those clusters of scoots in the back of the thigh and then some nice creasing again as you move out the length of the tail the tail is really quite long very impressive you can see how the skin texture and scale detail continues to decrease in size the further you run out into the tail absolutely gorgeous looking scale detail really really vibrant detailing so this one is definitely my favorite i can say that for sure then we have our badlands variant and this one is the one that uh, I almost instantly didn't get it, but a lot of people pointed out the fact that it has a very similar look to the Americanized Godzilla from 1998, and I definitely tend to agree with that when actually looking at the paint scheme and taking notice to that. It definitely has a similar look to that film and that Godzilla, and I think it would have looked actually okay, but the thing that bugs me about this one is the really metallic, glossy paint that we have for pretty much the entire figure. Like... If it weren't glossy, I feel like it would look way better. It still looks really cool. I can't discredit how nice it does actually look. And it definitely looks better in hand than I thought it would. But I really would have liked it, I think, without the kind of metallic shine that it has. One thing that I didn't really pick up on in the original prototype images is that where you see this very kind of metallic purple, there's actually like orange coloration in between all of the scales. So you can kind of see it, but the glossiness of the paint really really shines due to the light kind of shining the detail away but there's like this orangish tone in between all of the scales kind of like they used an orange wash and you can see that actually throughout many areas honestly the entire figure I would say and uh, you can see it up here in the palette as we have variations of browns as well as the orange kind of creeping through all of the scales. You can see it here in the front of the snout, up on the top of the head. Like the orange is actually extremely abundant throughout every area of the figure, but you don't really take notice to it on the prototype images, or at least I didn't. Not until I had it in hand, took a nice look at it. I definitely can say that the orange is actually really cool looking and that is one thing that I actually think works really nicely for this figure also creates a nice appearance as far as varying skin tone but 
It's just that the, I think the metallic look is what kind of bothers me about this one. But the eyes are painted with a beautiful tone of orange as well, given a nice black pupil. They shine very realistically. Again, loving the fact that they are straying from the gold coloration for the eyes of their figures. We also, again, have an articulated jaw, but this time we do have some really cool color variation on the inside of the mouth as we have like red-orange tones as well as yellows on the tongue. So that's probably like the coolest area, I would say, of this figure. And it really, really pops. Like when you open that mouth, you can't help but almost be in awe at how cool that looks. When you pop that mouth open and that yellow tongue kind of jumps out at you, definitely a very nice touch on the part of Rebor choosing the coloration for the inside of the tongue. I think the glossiness of the figure almost disappears when you open the mouth and you are almost pulled in by the coloration of the tongue. It kind of draws your attention away from the metallic shine of the dinosaur. But as you move back along the course of the body, you see again some nice variations of browns, some more of that kind of like, actually on the back, it more so almost looks like a mixture of blue like a metallic blue more so than a purple. Like you kind of have purplish tones and bluish tones in the face, but up here on the back, it almost looks a little bit more like a bluish kind of dry brushing of that metallic color. And you can also see again that we have that nice lighter tone, kind of like a light brownish green that also has a little hint of some like variations of bluish greens here in that skin that's hanging off of the throat. You can see again we have that beautiful dark wash applied to this one. The nails are painted with actually a few variations of color. It looks like there might be some browns and even some dark grays in the nails. It's kind of hard to really pick up on what tones they've used. Yeah, there's definitely some variation of color. You can see they've nicely dry brushed again the scoots of the hand out. We have really smooth transitions of color, a lot of really nice dry brushing. And again, that kind of orangish wash has been applied, which really, really makes the detail pop. You know, initially when I was going into this one, this was like my least favorite, I think, as far as these figures go. But having it actually up here in the light and really getting a good idea of how many different tones of color there are on this, it's actually way nicer than I thought it was. Like, once we move back to the thigh, I could see variations of greens, browns, and oranges. Like, there's just a lot of really nice color included on this figure. As you move down into the feet, you can again see the nice dry brushing over the scoots. Again, the nails of the feet are painted the same way as what we saw up there on the hands. And the paintwork continues to pretty much remain the same as far as the style and the you know, application of the paint throughout the course of the entire figure as you lead out the entire length of the tail. And due to the metallic look, it really does help the figure to stand out. I can say that, but I just feel like, you know, metallic colors aren't necessarily the most natural look for a dinosaur. But again, taking that into consideration, I will also say that the paintwork is so well done on this version that it probably is one of the more impressive versions of this figure just because there are so many tones of color and it's also nicely applied like it really is quite impressive when you take a look at it as far as the amount of coloration and everything and you can see the tail is you know a little bit nicer there's less of a seam on this one you can still see it a little bit right there but i think if maybe if i pushed it in yeah it pretty much pops back out but it does you know this one goes on a little nicer than the reddish volcanic version but Again, the paintwork looks pretty much the same everywhere else throughout the course of this figure. Definitely nicer than I expected it to be, and I actually am really starting to warm up to this version. Initially, I wasn't so sold on it due to those metallic tones, but having it here in the light, taking a look at it, I will say it's actually really striking and probably one of the nicer rebore paint jobs that I've seen as far as like variation of color included on the figure. And then we have our jungle variant, which sports a very iguana-like paint scheme. And this is one that initially, again, when I had seen it on the prototype images, I wasn't super sold on the lighter coloration of the face. Like, I obviously know why they did it and what they were trying to replicate as far as the paint scheme goes. But looking at it here in hand, I will say it definitely looks nicer than I was expecting it to be. And that seems to be pretty much the theme of these figures is that they are nicer than I thought they would be, which I actually did have some fairly high hopes for these. 
but they definitely look much nicer. Although this one, there's not as much color variation in the face. We really only have like a light green and then some nice dry brushing. It seems like that we have here with like a very dark gray. And that's really about it as far as coloration in the face. Of course, we do have a yellow eye and a black pupil. There is that. And the nostrils are also highlighted with a black. And they kind of have like a little bit of a gloss coat in the nostrils, which is definitely something that I feel like is a nice realistic addition to the figure. Once you open the inside of the mouth, we have the same coloration as what we had seen on the Volcanic Cavern version. Pretty much exactly the same tones, nice gloss coat and everything. So it shines very realistically like it should. As you move back along the course of the dinosaur, you get these beautiful variations of greens as we have a little bit of a darker green up here and then a lighter kind of yellowish green as you move down to the underside as well as some other light tones down here, kind of like some different variations of light greens. But I really do like the yellowish tones right here in the chest leading up into the throat. I really, really do like that coloration. You can see the dark wash again applied to this one everywhere, really highlighting the detail beautifully. And then you can see that there's kind of like an orangish coloration that runs along those ridges that run down the spinal column. That's pretty much the only area you really see it is running along the spinal column, although some of these kind of scoots running along the back have been highlighted with it, but they're not all highlighted, just certain ones. I don't know if that was done on purpose or if it's just, you know, the way it was dry brushed over, but it does look pretty cool. I do like that aspect. The transition between the green down into the yellows and everything is really smooth, just like we saw on every figure so far. The paintwork of these is really actually quite nicely done. And again, same deal here, moving down into the arm, you can see nice dry brushing over those scoots and everything. Beautiful wash applied, making the detail pop in a super realistic way. And you can see some variations of oranges as you reach the hands. So so there is some nice color transitioning going on right there. You can also see again the highlighting of the scoots and everything as far as like those dark blacks or dark grays. Beautiful greens again as we move down the course of the leg. And then down into the foot and the foot kind of transitions to like a mixture of like some orangish tones as well as some browns. So there is some really nice color variation actually within the foot of the dinosaur which is really nice to see. I almost pick up on like some reddish tones in there sort of as well. I really like the paintwork of the foot specifically of this version. And then we lead up here, you can kind of see like some of the light green creeping through these scoots running down the back of the thigh. And you can see that we get this really dark striping, again, very iguana-like as we lead out the length of the tail. Those stripes, although darker stripes, really do create a nice element of flashiness for the figure. And you can see the coloration on the opposing side and everything looks pretty much exactly like it did on the initial side. You can see some of the light greens kind of popping through certain areas within the darker greens. They have highlighted the ears as well with the darker coloration, but it looks honestly beautiful. Again, it was one of those figures that I was like, ah, I don't know how much I like it just because of like the awkward look of the lighter face but in hand although it still isn't my favorite I would have preferred the lighter green to have been maybe like some darker greens and stuff I think it would have looked nicer but in hand it does definitely look nicer than I was expecting it to look and even though it's a little bit off-putting I think with the lighter coloration of the face again it's definitely one of those situations like pretty much every one of these other figures here where the in-hand feel for the figure is better than the initial prototype. But this one here is probably my least favorite, I think, of the three. As far as a size goes, it is definitely quite large. For a length, you are looking at just shy of about 16 inches or around 40 and a half centimeters. And then for a height, about 5 inches or just shy of 13 centimeters. Again, pretty impressive in the size department. And as far as the articulation goes, they all have the exact same articulation, the articulated jaw, the articulation in the arms. Again, the arms do pop off, but they go back in super easily. And they can, of course, move really far. Like, you can totally swivel the arms around if you would choose to. So you can position the arms wherever you would like. And then you have the bendable wire tail, which is definitely really nice. Again, something that I think is pretty fun about the Reborn models would be the articulated tail, allowing you to pose it however you would like. But as far as the size comparison goes, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line. And you can definitely see that it sports a pretty darn impressive size, especially in the length department. But overall, I would say it's definitely one of the most impressively large theropods that 
Rebor has released. It's not probably quite as large as like their Tyrannosaurs, but honestly, I don't feel like it's all that far off. So for another size comparison, here is the Rebor Killer Queen, and from up above, you can definitely see that size-wise, they're not too far off. Obviously, the Rex is larger, but when you're up above, you can see lengthwise, they're fairly similar. The Tyrannosaurus just has more overall body mass. Again, I kind of expected a similar size to their Ceratosaurus, which is not the case. And to show you that, there is the Rebor Ceratosaurus, and you can really, really tell, I think, now, again, that this definitely has a very impressive size. And uh, when it comes to the Ceratosaurus, he's actually much smaller. If we actually put them next to each other, again, whoops, well, the Ceratosaurus fell over, but if we put them next to each other, you can again see a massive size difference honestly between the two and then for another size comparison here is the recent pnso Sintosaurus, and you can again see that the saurophaganax is a good bit larger and then for another comparison we've got ourselves a takara tomi stegosaurus again showing you that there is even no remote size comparison at all between those guys the takara tomi figures are fairly small and for one more comparison just a random one again a figure that I feel like is fairly popular. There is the Collecte Dimetrodon in comparison to our Saurophaganax. So these brand new Rebor Saurophaganax figures are really quite beautiful, definitely nicer than I expected them to be. When they initially unveiled them, I was kind of torn because there weren't any paint schemes that really jumped out at me that I was like, oh, I definitely love this one. I had settled on the reddish version that I was like, oh, you know, it looks the best out of all of them. I feel like it's the most naturalistic potentially, even though I don't know how natural a red coloration for a predator would be as far as like the overall body color i feel like it would potentially stick out like a sore thumb but i felt like that as far as the coloration goes like some of the other ones didn't look so great like the light face of the greenish version or the metallic kind of paint application for the godzilla-ish type version like i felt like they didn't look all that natural but the reddish one definitely looked natural to me and I still really like that coloration. I would say it's my favorite out of all of these. It's definitely a beautiful paint application. Really nice looking color scheme that they've chosen for it. Nothing overly flashy, but it works. And it works really well. The other ones, though, I will say are definitely nicer than I expected them to be. Specifically, the kind of Godzilla 1998 version, which is the Badlands variant, is way nicer than I expected it. Even with the metallic coloration, which I'm not a huge fan of. I will say that the coloration is really nicely applied and it does help for the figure to stand out and stand out more than the others do. And once you actually again get it up to a nice light, the coloration is really impressive on that one. Like there's a lot of different tones of color making it probably, I would say my second favorite honestly. And I expected that one to potentially be my least favorite. So it really impressed me. And the coloration on the inside of the mouth as well is just beautiful if you ask me. So that one was a surprisingly really nice looking version. And then the iguana style version, which is the jungle variant, also looks really nice in hand, much better than I expected it to. They've applied some nice naturalistic tones of color. And even though they've kind of borrowed the color scheme of an iguana for it, I feel like it actually does look natural on the figure. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of still would be the light face. The light green face could have been a little bit better, but... If they're kind of trying to capture the look of an iguana, again, they're going to need that lighter coloration for the face for it to really look right. But overall, again, the coloration of that one as well is much nicer in hand than I expected it to be, and yet another pleasant surprise. The size of the figures as well really blew my mind. Was not expecting them to be so large. I expected them to fall kind of in the range of their Ceratosaurus and Utyrannus, but they're much larger than I expected them to be just like with the recent Smilodon, again, really blew me away when I pulled them out of the packaging. So honestly, as a whole, these are beautiful looking. The sculpts are fantastic, extremely highly detailed. You have some really nice articulation within the arms, the tail, and the jaw. So that's a huge plus as well. All of the paintwork is nice and precise, also a huge plus. So if you are interested in these, I will include links in the description to all three variants on everythingdinosaur.com. And that is where I recommend picking them up. If you are going to try to order from anywhere else, 
house, you'll probably be waiting a while, whereas Everything Dinosaur is quick to ship your items out pretty much instantly when you order them and they get to you really quickly. Again, one of the best websites online to purchase dinosaurs. And that is where I purchased all three of these. So again, if you are interested, make sure you check the links in the description. Head on over to Everything Dinosaur and pick these up for yourself and make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.